So hello everybody. In this short tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about conditional compile, what it is and how you can use it within your VBA code. We're going to use Microsoft Access for the tutorial. And the first question we need to answer is, what is conditional compile? Well, in short, it allows you to compile different versions of your code according to some value of some constant. Why might this be useful? Well, you might have code that behaves differently on, for example, a 32-bit platform than it does on a 64-bit platform. You might have code that you want to behave differently when you're in a debug mode and you're actually building the code compared to when you actually release it to your users. And there are a number of other examples of where you might use it as well. And conditional compile gives us a convenient way to actually implement this. So at the moment we can see I've got an access database open and inside this we've got a module called M conditional compile. We're going to use Alt and F11 to open up the Visual Basic Editor. And within the Visual Basic Editor, we can see I've already built the shell of a subroutine called conditional compile examples. Now, before we explain how to use conditional compile, I'm going to demonstrate some of the concepts using a normal constant and using some normal if statements. And we're going to use a debug mode to demonstrate this to start with. So we'll use constant debug mode as boolean equals true. Then we're going to have just a simple little line of code, which is if debug mode, then debug.print. We are in debug mode. And if not debug mode, then debug.print. We are not in debug mode. So pretty straightforward, nothing complicated going on so far. I'm also going to add a breakpoint just here so that we can actually look in the locals window and see our variable debug mode and see its value while the code is executing. So let's try running that code now using the F5 key. You can see it stops on our breakpoint and I just want to go view locals window. We can see in the locals window under the M conditional compile module, we've got a variable for debug mode and it's set to true and it's of type Boolean. We'll close that down for now. And then I just want to continue the execution again using F5. Then I just want to open up the immediate window using control and G and see what's printed in the immediate window. Okay, so it's saying we're in debug mode, which is correct. That's what we're expecting. Let's clear that out, close it down. And this time I'm going to remove the breakpoint. Now I'm going to change this value to false. Save compile, then I'm going to use F5 to run it again. Control and G to open up the immediate window. And this time it's saying we're not in debug mode. Again, that's exactly what we're expecting. So let's clear that out, close down the immediate window. And that's how it would behave. Had we set it up normally using a module level constant. Next, we're going to change this to use a module level conditional compile constant. To do this, we need to remove the type of the constant. And we need to use the keyword pound const. Okay. And if we click on compile again, now we're getting a compile area because the variable is not defined for debug mode. Okay. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to change some of these if statements so that they have the pound symbol before them. And these then become conditional compile keywords for if and end if. We're going to save. And we're going to compile again. And this time it compiles fine. And that's because it recognizes that it's looking for a conditional compile constant instead of a normal constant. Again, we're going to add our breakpoint into our code. We're just going to try running our code again using the F5 key. This time when we hit the breakpoint, again, we're going to open up the locals window. 
And what we see is the module conditional compile does not contain any variables, even though we've got this conditional compile variable defined at the top for debug mode. Let's close down the locals window and let's just continue the execution. Next, let's open up the immediate window with control and G. What we see is that at the moment it's saying we are not in debug mode. And that's exactly what we're expecting because at the moment debug mode is set to false. So let's remove that breakpoint. Next, we're going to change the value of this to true. And the reason I'm changing it to true and the reason why I demonstrated this with our normal code is just to show you that it behaves in exactly the same way as a normal if block. So again, we're going to compile and we are going to use the F5 key to run that code. Control and G to open up the immediate window. And we can see this time we are in debug mode. Okay, so there are a few points that I want you to bear in mind with this so far. For conditional compile, we have an additional set of keywords. Each of these keywords has the pound symbol in front of them. When we define a module level conditional compile constant, we cannot tell the code what type that constant should be. It's almost like declaring a variant. You have to let the Visual Basic editor decide for you. However, you can give it values that specify a given type, such as a long, a Boolean, or a string. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a different way to define a conditional compile constant. We can see here we've defined it at module level. That means it won't be available to other modules in our database. So we're going to comment out that code, and instead we're gonna create a project level conditional compile constant. We do this by clicking on the conditional compile project, right clicking and going to the properties. Then in the properties, we see a box at the bottom for conditional compilation arguments. Now in this, let's use a debug mode equals. Now, when we define the conditional compile constants here, they have to be of type integer. If they are not of type integer, then we'll get an error. So for example, if I type true and then click on OK, it complains that we've got an invalid syntax. Click on OK, and then instead of using true, we're gonna use the value zero for false. We're gonna click on OK to close that down. We're gonna click on save and compile. This time, because we've used the value of zero, we're expecting it to say we are not in debug mode. So let's use the F5 key to run the code again. Control and G to open up the immediate window. And here that's as we expect, it's saying we are not in debug mode. Okay, let's clear that out and close it down. This time I want you to show you what happens when we set it to a non-zero value, which would be equivalent to true. Again, we save and we compile. Then we use the F5 key to run the code again. And Control and G to open up the immediate window. And this time we see something very odd, which is that it's saying we are both in debug mode and that we are not in debug mode. Now the first conclusion that we might jump to here is that the conditional compile if statement does not behave in the same way as a normal if statement. That's not correct, it's not true. The reason that it's dropped into both of these if routines is because when we define a project level conditional compile constant, it has to be of type integer. And when it's of type integer, the not keyword doesn't work the same way as it does with a Boolean. So to just kind of demonstrate this point, I'm gonna delete that, close down the immediate window, and this time I'm gonna use cbool to convert it to a Boolean. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, 
to convert it to a boolean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compile and we're going to try running that code again with the F5 key. And we're going to use Control and G to open up the immediate window. And this time it's behaving exactly like we expect it to. It's saying that we are in debug mode. Let's select that, delete it, and close down the immediate window. And again, just to really hammer the point home, what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to remove this altogether. And we're going to use a normal constant. We're going to say as integer equals one. Then we're going to say, using a normal if block, And the whole reason for me doing this is that I want to show you that if we had just a normal module level constant defined as an integer, then we get the same behavior where it drops into both of these if routines. That's what I'm looking to demonstrate. Okay. So we use F5 to run that code, control and G to open up the immediate window. And we can see that's exactly what I was expecting to happen. It is not due to the conditional compile if block, it is due to the type of the argument that you're evaluating your if statement with. In this case, it's because it's an integer instead of a Boolean. Okay, so that's one of the key things to watch out for when you're using conditional compilation. So the next thing I want to show you is how to declare multiple project level conditional compile constants. We're going to start by just changing some of this code so that it's using conditional compilation. And I'm just going to remove this for now. And actually we'll remove this block as well. So we've got a debug mode constant that we're expecting. Let's create that at a at a project level, we'll say, so that's true. And we're going to say random integer equals five. Now the way that we include multiple conditional compile constants at a project level is using the colon syntax here. And then we just list each of the conditional compilation constants with their values separated by the colon. We click on OK. And then we're going to just demonstrate this with if random integer equals five, then debug.print. Okay, so this also shows us some of the other conditional compile keywords. In this case, the pound else keyword. We're going to compile again, and we're just going to run that code using the F5 key. Open up the immediate window using Control and G. And we can see we are in debug mode and random integer is set to five. Exactly what we're expecting. The next thing I would like to show you is there are some built in conditional compile constants, ones that we don't have to define because the Visual Basic editor knows what they are. So a particular example of these built in conditional compile constants is whether your setup is using a 64 bit or 32 bit platform. So let's let's build an example for that. If win 32, then else if win 64, then else end if. So if we're on Windows 32, then debug.print says, and if win 64.
and otherwise you are using an ancient machine <laughs> okay and this also shows us one of the final additional conditional compile keywords which is the pound symbol else if okay as usual click on the compile button then we're going to press the F5 key to run the code Control and G to open up the immediate window and when we do we can see that we are using 32-bit access at the moment great exactly what we're expecting one final kind of thing to watch out for when you're using conditional compilation is and one of the reasons why I've decided to use Microsoft Access is it overrides the option compare directive so in this case we can see at the top I've got option compare database however in any of these if blocks if we were to drop into that if block instead it would always use option compare text so there is a little difference in the behavior when we're inside these if blocks however apart from that and as far as I'm aware they do behave in the same way as a normal if block the key thing to watch out for as I've talked about is that when you have a project level conditional compile variable it's always of type integer and an integer behaves differently to a boolean in your if statements so you've just got to be careful that your if statements are constructed correctly and that you're always going to drop into them when you want to drop into them.